Hi, my name is Kevin Brake, and in this course you will learn about Rules of the Road. Congratulations on your desire to learn how to drive safely. This application has been created to assist you in preparation for the written portion of your driver's examination. After passing this online training, you will be able to download and print a certificate proving you are ready to become a responsible driver. Take note, this program is not a substitute for the actual Department of Motor Vehicles quiz. You will still need to prepare for your written quiz by reviewing the documentation provided to you by your local DMV. Scenario number one of three. When approaching an intersection that is not controlled by traffic lights, stop or yield signs, or a police officer, you must yield the right of way to the traffic on your right hand side. Scenario 2 of 3. When turning left at an intersection you must yield the right of way to any vehicles coming toward you before you proceed. Scenario 3 of 3. When entering a highway from any side road or driveway you must always yield the right of way to the traffic on the main highway as well as to pedestrians about to cross. On the highway where there is a passing lane, the traffic in the through lane has the right of way when both lanes are merged. Scenario 1 of 1. At an intersection where stop signs are located on all four corners, the first vehicle to come to a full stop should be allowed to proceed first. When two vehicles arrive at such an intersection at the same time, the vehicle on the right hand side has the right of way and should proceed through the intersection first. If you are behind a vehicle that has stopped at a stop sign, you must also come to a full stop at the stop sign when the vehicle has moved on. If you are not sure who has the right of way, it is safer to yield the right of way to the other driver. It is better to avoid a collision than to insist on having the right of way. Never pass a vehicle that has stopped at a stop sign, traffic light, or crosswalk. Always yield the right of way to emergency vehicles when they have their lights flashing and the siren on. Pull to the right as far as possible remain stopped until the emergency vehicle has passed. Scenario 1 of 9. To make a right turn. You must signal your intention to make a right turn before approaching the intersection. Move into the lane closest to the right side of the road and come to a complete stop. Yield the right away to pedestrians and other traffic. Make sure you check your blind spot before turning. Proceed into the right lane of the highway on which you wish to travel. Two of nine. Left turns. From a one-way street to another one-way street. When approaching an intersection, you must signal your intention to make a left turn and move into the lane of the one-way street make sure your way is clear. Stop and move into the lane of the one-way street on which you wish to travel. Three of nine left turns. From a one-way street to a two-way street. When approaching an intersection you must signal your intention to turn left and move into the left lane of the one-way street. Make sure the way is clear Enter the two-way street to the right of the center line in the lane that is closest to the center line. Four of nine left turns from a two-way street to a one-way street. When approaching an intersection, you must signal your intention to turn left and move into the lane of the two-way street, the lane closest to the center line. Make sure the way is clear. Proceed into the left lane of the one-way street. Five of nine. Left turns. From a two-way street to another two-way street. When approaching an intersection, you must signal your intention to turn left and move into the lane 
immediately to the right of the center lane. You must proceed through the intersection onto the lane immediately to the right of the center line on that two-way street when the way is clear. Six of nine left turns from a two-way street to another two-way street double left turns where signs or lights indicate that two lanes of traffic may turn left you must move into one of the lanes proceed through the intersection and complete the turn in the same lane two-point turns if you need to turn around on a narrow road it is best to wait until you can make the turn using a side road drive past the side of the road turn on your right signal and stop your vehicle to the extreme right side of the road when the way is clear back up slowly onto the side of the road check again for traffic turn on your left signal and proceed as usual to make a left turn onto the same highway you just left three-point turns to make a three-point turn on the highway you must first turn on your right signal and pull off to the extreme right side of the road. When the way is clear, turn your vehicle sharply to the left. Cross to the other side of the road and stop your vehicle at the edge. Put your car in reverse, turn the wheel sharply to the right and back up to the other side of the road. Complete the turn moving forward in the opposite direction from which you came. Scenario 9 of 9, U-turns. A U-turn should be made only under the following conditions. First, the road must be wide enough to allow a turn in just one swing. Secondly, you must be able to see far enough to the front and rear of your vehicle to make sure that no other traffic is near. If you want to make a U-turn and you are in an area where U-turns are permitted, you must first stop the car on the extreme right side of the road. Signal a left turn. Check in front and rear for traffic, including your left blind spot, and turn your wheel sharply to the left. Move the car carefully across the road and complete the turn. A U-turn is not permitted in these conditions. At an intersection, near the top of a hill, on a curve or bend in the road, when interfering with other traffic, and where a sign prohibits such a turn. Safe passing, scenario one of one. When passing a parked vehicle, you must be alert for doors opening, cars pulling out, and pedestrians walking between the cars. You must pass a moving vehicle following these steps. One, pass only when the center lane markings permit. There must be a broken yellow center line on your left side before you may attempt to pass. Two. Make sure the way ahead and to the rear is clear of traffic. Remember to check your blind spot. 3. Signal your intention to pass. Use your left signal well behind the vehicle in front of you and move carefully into the passing lane. Give an audible signal before pulling into the passing lane. 4. Speed up to complete the pass. Be careful not to go over the posted speed limit. 5. After you've passed the vehicle, Signal your intention to move back into the right lane. Use the right signal, but wait until you can see both headlights of your vehicle you have just passed in your rearview mirror before doing so. When can you pass? You are permitted to pass other vehicles on the right side when the driver in front of you is making a left turn, where there are two or more lanes in each direction, passing on one-way streets, a special lane is provided for motorists. When you use such a passing lane, if you have enough time to complete the pass safely before the passing zone ends, the driver in the vehicle being passed also has a responsibility to cooperate. Never speed up when another vehicle is attempting to pass you. To avoid collision, you may sometimes have to slow down to allow the passing vehicle the opportunity to move safely into your lane of traffic. When you cannot pass, whenever weather conditions hinder your view, when you are on a curve in the road, 
when you are at an intersection or railway crossing, when you are within 30 meters of a crosswalk, when you are on a blind hill near the top of a hill, when you are on a narrow bridge, where a solid line marking is to your left, where a sign prohibits passing. These are the instances you cannot pass. Scenario 1 of 5. You must signal when you intend to stop or suddenly decrease the speed of your vehicle, turn left or turn right, change from one lane to another, pass a vehicle on the highway, leave the roadway, set your vehicle in motion from a parked position. Scenario 2 of 5. Signal lights must be in the form of directional signals, left and right indicators, or the brake. If the signal lights of a vehicle are not working, you must use your hand and arm signals. You must also use hand signals when your signal lights are hard to see, such as when you are pulling out of a line of parked cars. Scenario 3 of 5. Giving signals properly and in sufficient amount of time to let other motorists know what your intentions are. It also allows them time to react and may reduce a chance of collision occurring. Scenario 4 of 5. Lane changing. When you must change lanes, always do the following. Check the traffic ahead of you. Look into your rearview mirror for traffic approaching from the rear. Signal your intention to change to the left or the right. Before turning your head in the direction of your turn, check over your shoulder for cars that are in your blind spot. Maintain or increase speed during the lane change. Make sure that you are not following other traffic too closely. Scenario 5 of 5. Blind spot. Even if your mirrors are correctly positioned, there is still a blind spot to the right and left rear corners of your vehicle. Your rear view mirror will not show you the car in the lane next to yours, especially when the front bumper of the other driver's vehicle is even with or past your rear bumper. If you rely on your mirror only and turn into the other lane without looking over your shoulder, a collision is almost sure to occur. Divided Highway Scenario 1 of 3 Entering a Divided Highway To enter a Divided Highway you must first move onto an access ramp and then onto an accelerated lane. When you enter the accelerated lane you must signal your intention to move left and speed up to be able to merge smoothly with the through traffic. Always maintain a safe following distance after entering traffic. When driving around a curve, enter the curve slowly and increase speed. Scenario 2 of 3. Driving on a divided highway. Drivers already on the highway should move onto the left lane if it is safe to do so. This leaves the right lane open for motorists entering the divided highway and allows them to merge safely. Scenario 3 of 3, leaving a divided highway. When leaving a divided highway, signal your intention to move to the right and proceed into the deceleration lane. Slow down and adjust your speed to the posted limit on the exit ramp. Signs are posted far enough in advance to warn motorists that this is an exit coming up. If you miss your exit, do not stop or back up on the divided highway. Instead, proceed as usual and turn off at the next exit. Cloverleaf, scenario one of one. Most modern highways have roads that intersect each other on different levels. For example, an overpass. The cloverleaf is a common example of such an intersection. The advantage of this type of intersection is that all vehicles do not have to cross the path of other traffic in order to make a turn. At a cloverleaf intersection, all turns are right turns. To make a right turn onto the intersecting highway, 
you must turn right before you reach the bridge or overpass. Backing, scenario one of one. The proper procedure for backing is important to learn in order to prevent traffic collisions. Backing is permitted only when the move can be made safely. One, you must never back up your vehicle until you have checked behind it from the outside first. Children, bicycles, and other small objects are not always visible from inside of the car. Two, once you are seated in the vehicle, check both sides of the road to make sure that the way is clear. 3. From the normal seating position, shift your weight onto the right hip and turn your body to look out the rear window, bracing yourself by placing your arm along the top of the front passenger side seat. 4. Place your left hand at the top center position on the steering wheel. Five. Start to back out slowly and safely. 6. If you must cross a pedestrian crosswalk or sidewalk before entering the street, stop and check both sides of the roadway once again. 7. Proceed when the way is clear. Always back into the nearest lane of traffic that is facing in the direction that you want to go. Parking, scenario 1 of 7. The do's of parking. Park your vehicle only where it is safe and legal. Check for signs and pavement markings to do so. If you must park on the highway, pull over to the right shoulder of the road parallel to the roadway and make sure your vehicle can be seen from a distance of 60 meters in either direction. Make sure your ignition is locked, the key is removed, and the vehicle is properly braked. In case of emergency, pull over to the right side of the roadway and use your emergency indicators or flares to warn other motorists of your presence. Many people raise the hood of their vehicles to indicate they need help. Most motorists recognize and respond to this distress signal. Never move your vehicle from a parked position unless you check traffic. Signal your intention to move and pull from the curb when it is safe to do so. The don'ts of parking. Do not park 10 meters from a stop sign or other traffic control signal. Do not park six meters from a crosswalk. Do not park one meter from the point of the curve or edge of the roadway opposite of a fire hydrant. Do not park 20 meters from a bus stop. Do not park 15 meters from a railway crossing. Do not park seven meters from the entrance to a fire station. Do not park six meters from the entrance to a public building, school, or church. Do not park if you are blocking a sidewalk, intersection, traffic lane, driveway, or emergency exit. Do not park if you are in front of an authorized loading door, on a bridge, or in a tunnel. Do not park on the left side of a vehicle already stopped on the side of the road. Do not park where you are obstructing the free flow of traffic. Scenario 2 of 7. If there is a curb, turn your wheels towards the center of the street. Scenario 3 of 7. If there is no curb, turn your wheels towards the edge of the street. Scenario 4 of 7. If you park facing downhill, always turn your wheel towards the edge of the street. Scenario 5 of 7. Parallel parking. When you want to park between two other parked vehicles, you must follow the procedure for parallel parking. 1. Make sure there is enough space between the two parked cars for your vehicle. One and a half times the length of your own vehicle should be enough. 2. Drive parallel to the front of the vehicle and stop when your bumper is lined up with the back bumper of the other parked vehicle. 3. Shift to reverse and back up slowly, turning the steering wheel sharply to the right until your vehicle is approximately at a 45 degree angle to the curb. 4. When your front bumper can clear the rear bumper of the vehicle car ahead, turn the steering wheel sharply to the left and continue to back up slowly into the parking space. If necessary, straighten the wheels and move the vehicle forward in order to have an equal distance both in the front and rear for clearance. When you are parked properly, your wheel should be within 30 centimeters of the curb. 
Scenario 6 of 7, Angle Parking. When the desired parking space is 90 degrees at a right angle to the road, you should back into the space and then drive out. You should be familiar with backing in to the space from the left and the right. Scenario 7 of 7, Angle Parking. When the desired parking space is slanted at a 60 degree angle to the road, you should drive into it and back out. School buses, scenario one of one. Meeting or overtaking a school bus. Whenever you approach a school bus that has stopped to pick up or drop off school children and is displaying a visual sign such as a flashing sign and stop sign, you must stop before reaching the bus. This is true whether you are approaching the bus from the front or the rear. You must remain stopped until the bus has started up again, or the driver signals you to go on, or until the flashing lights and stop sign are deactivated. Emergency Vehicles Scenario 1 of 1 Priority is given to all emergency vehicles, including fire engines, police cars, emergency response vehicles, and ambulances. They have the right of way at all times when they are displaying flashing, red lights, and signaling with a bell or siren. Upon the approach of an emergency vehicle with its signal lights operating, you must 1. Yield the right of way immediately. 2. Put your signal on and pull over to the right hand curb or edge of the roadway clear of an intersection. 3. Stop and remain stopped until the emergency vehicle has passed. Following distances scenario 1 of 3. Make sure you have enough space between you and the vehicles in front of you. Adjust your following distance based upon the amount of traffic, speed, of other vehicles and road conditions. The minimum safe following distance for one ordinary vehicles is one car length for every 15 kilometers, double when roads are slippery. Two, the minimum following distance for commercial vehicles is 150 meters. Large vehicles reduce visibility require a greater distance to stop. Three, the two second rule or time interval driving method is a good way to test your distance from the car ahead. The two second rule or the time interval driving method explained. The car ahead of you is about to pass a checkpoint. For example, a sign, driveway, pole or other marker. Begin to count the seconds. Watch the car ahead of you pass the checkpoint. If it takes fewer than two seconds for your car to pass the same checkpoint, you are following too close to allow a safe stop. If it takes two seconds or more for your car to pass the same checkpoint, you have developed a reasonable following distance for ideal weather conditions between your car and the vehicle ahead. Scenario 2 of 3. To avoid hitting the car in front of you, you must 1. Pay strict attention to your driving. 2. Keep calm and watch the brake lights of the car ahead of you, but don't depend on them. They may not be working. And 3. Look for potential problems for the driver ahead of you, but never assume what the driver's actions will be. 4. Watch for a decrease in distance between your car and the one ahead. If a car ahead stops, allow enough time and distance for it to start moving again. Scenario 3 of 3. To avoid being struck from behind, you must keep your brakes in good working order. 2. Consistently look behind you. Use your mirrors and keep your rear view window clean, clear of frost and snow and other obstructions. 3. Signal in advance for turns, stops and lane changes. Slow down gradually to alert the driver behind you. 4. Keep pace with the traffic based on weather conditions and speed limits. Stopping and reaction, scenario one of four. It is important to drive at a speed that will allow you to stop at a safe distance from anything. Because of inattention, poor visibility, or low visibility conditions, 
you may travel some distance towards a dangerous situation before you see it. Even after you see an object in your path, you may go an additional distance before recognizing it as a hazard, which will require you to stop. In the event the legal speed sign is missing, the speed limit is 100 kilometers on paved portions of the Trans-Canada Highway, 80 kilometers on other paved highways, 60 kilometers on gravel roads, and 50 kilometers throughout settlements or school zones. Scenario 2 of 4. Reaction distance. Is the distance a vehicle travels after you move your foot from the accelerator to the brake to suddenly stop? The time it takes three quarters of a second to stop on the brakes after seeing danger is known as reaction time. In three-fourths of a second your vehicle traveling at 50 kilometers will go 10 meters about two car lengths before you can even start to apply the brakes. Scenario 3 of 4. Brakes bring a vehicle to a stop. How far it travels before stopping depends on 1. Speed, 2. Condition of the brakes, 3. Condition of the tires, 4. Nature, 5. Condition of the road. It also depends on whether the vehicle is on a level road or traveling up or down a hill. At a speed of 30 kilometers, the average braking distance is about 10 meters, and the stopping distance is the sum of the reaction distance and the braking distance, about 20 meters. Scenario 4 of 4, operating a manual transmission. Press the accelerator to speed up the engine a little and let the clutch out slowly until the point of contact or friction is felt. Slowly let the clutch pedal up and accelerate lightly at the same time. When the vehicle has reached about 15 kph, depress the clutch, release the accelerator, push the gear shift to neutral and onto the second gear. Release the clutch slowly and gently press the accelerator. Repeat this procedure for changing to high gears. Lights. Scenario 1 of 3. Lights are required from one half hour before sunset to one half hour after sunrise and at any time when visibility prevents you from seeing persons and vehicles clearly at a distance of 150 meters or less. Scenario 2 of 3. Use high beam lights only when driving in the open country without other cars nearby. If you meet or follow another vehicle, you must dim your lights within 150 meters of that vehicle. Use low beam lights when approaching other cars when you are driving by street light, in fog and within 100 meters of another vehicle. Scenario 3 of 3. At night, the glaring headlights of oncoming cars or the reflection of lights from behind in your rearview mirror can seriously reduce your vision. The glare from headlights causes the pupil of the eye to contract, and it takes about seven seconds for the pupil to recover and readjust to the sense of the less intense light. During this time, you may be temporarily blinded. If you were traveling at 90 kilometers for those seven seconds, you would have gone 125 meters while you had absolutely no vision. To avoid the effects of glare, direct your vision away from headlights by looking to the right edge of the roadway. To cut glare from the rear, adjust your mirror or use a daylight mirror. Well, that's it. We're all done. Congratulations on completing the theory section of the Rules of the Road Driver's Education Program. This is what happens next. You will need to complete a Rules of the Road quiz. The quiz will be based on information covered during your online training. Also, we look forward to your feedback. Please provide us with your opinion on what you liked and disliked about the training. Upon obtaining a passing grade, you will be presented with a certificate of completion by email. You can use this certificate to prove you are ready to become a responsible driver. Again, thank you for participating.